Welcome to the sixth module of your course in environmental geography. In this course, we're talking about volcanoes, and I am Nathan Bowden, your lecturer for this course. In this, course, in this module, you will learn what volcanoes are, where they occur, and why they form, the different types of volcanoes and the hazards associated with each type of volcano, how scientists study volcanoes and come to understand predict their eruptions, how people can lower the risks posed by volcanoes. Volcanoes, for instance, if you were to fly from, um, from California to Japan uh, over the Pacific Rim, you'd see many volcanoes picking up through the, um, the Pacific Ocean. These include the Aleutian Islands of Alaska. What well, volcanoes are, um, they consist of magma, which is molten rock from underground, which rises from great depths to the upper level of the crust and erupts as lava onto the surface. So magma is the underground molten rock, and when it erupts, it's known as la lava. It is very hot and dense, or more buoyant than the surrounding solid rock, it quickly cools and solidifies on the surface because of relatively low temperatures on the surface. And magma contains dissolved gases as well as a being molten rock. As it rises, the confining pressure of the, of the overlying rock in the upper crust decreases. So the dissolved gas bubbles come out of the solution like uh, opening up a shaken bottle of uh, Coca-Cola or other soda. So the more dissolved gas, the more that the gases are in the dissolved rock, the more explosive the magma will be. Magma will quickly cool and uh, turn into igneous rock. This uh, we learned in the uh, Geosphere Materials module. Uh, this photo is taken in Hawaii, um, showing, um, showing the molten rock turning into gray rock, igneous rock, as it cools. So how many volcanoes have been active in the last 10,000 years? Well, there have been approximately 1,300 to 1,500 volcanoes on land with, with probable eruptions, that's only on land. Um, there are only about 550 volcanic eruptions which have eyewitness accounts. And 50 to 70 volcanoes erupt on land on land in an average year. And of course, there are many, many more volcanic eruptions which occur in the deep oceans. The, some, some notable volcanic eruptions you see in the table, uh, in the table here, um, a, very, a very old one in, in the year 79, uh, Vesuvius, uh, which killed approximately 15,000 people, which is a very lot, large amount of people in, in the year 79. Uh, Laki in Iceland in 1783, again, caused 10,000. Wounds in Japan, um, which caused not only death, but also a tsunami, of, uh, killed 14,000 people. Tembora, uh, one of the highest death counts in 1815 in Indonesia. And uh, most possibly the, the largest volcanic eruption in human recorded history was Krakatoa in, in, in Indonesia which caused 36,000 uh, people to lose their lives. And it was an explosion, which was thousands of miles away. And there have been, in, in recent past, uh, in, this, in recent human uh, memory, uh, many uh, notable um, volcanoes, including uh, Mount St. Helens in the United States and Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines. Uh, there are many uh, potential active volcanoes in the Western United States, which many people are not aware of, um, but these volcanoes are quite often uh, well, well known by other uh, as associations with them, such as skiing. There are different types of magmas. Eruptions range from uh, very spectacular explosions to, as you saw in the previous photo, slow moving or oozing red hot lava flows. And the differences reflect. Uh, and not all, all magmas have the same. They have uh, different temperatures, different compositions. So it will have um, varying amounts of uh, silica 
and, and also has uh, different dissolved gas contents. Here we have three different types of magma types from mafic, mafic, which has a lower amount of silica and therefore a low amount of viscosity. Viscosity uh, is low in mafic, which because has a low silica content. It erupts at a very high temperature and is a flow. The opposite side of the spectrum is mel sorry, felsic. Uh, felsic, um, again, mafic is, uh, has a large uh, magnesium content and felsic has a high iron content. It has very high silicon content, more than 65%, uh, so it means it's very viscous, or resistant to flow. And has relatively lower eruption temperature, but that's still 900 degrees Celsius. Viscosity, as I said, was a resistance to flow, and it depends on the temperature and the composition. Uh, the composition, as I mentioned, the mafic having a low percentage of, uh, low percentage of silica and felsic having a large percentage of uh, silica. Uh, high silica means it's more viscous or resistant to flow. Um, magnets with high uh, SO2 solidify at lower temperatures. So their viscosity increases even more. The amount of uh, silica depends on the composition of the source rocks, what type of rocks are, have melted, but also in uh, the percentage of partial melting of the source. So a lower, lower percentage of melting is a higher silica content and therefore a higher viscosity. Gas content in lavas, the most abundant gas is, uh, is water steam, as well as uh, carbon dioxide, CO2, and SO2. Gases may separate from magma during ascent because the uh, magma may partially crystallize and uh, therefore will have less liquid. Temperatures will go down and uh, being trapped, it uh, will accumulate. It will decrease in the confining pressure and last, the gas uh, pressure will increase. Because of this, there could be a very large eruption. And one of the types of volcanoes is a shield volcano. An example of a shield volcano is um, um, Mount Kilauea. It's a, is a currently an active volcano on the um, island of Hawaii. Uh, and the, the new volcano on this um, island is called Loihi in the southern part. The island of Hawaii, also called the Big Island, consists of five overlapping volcanoes, which has formed over um, a few hundred thousand years, ranging from Kohala, the oldest, to Kilauea, the youngest, on the southern, the eastern side of the island. Shield volcanoes are wide and gently sloping. They are, they are called shield volcanoes because they look like the upturned warrior shield. They are almost entirely composed of layers of solidified mafic lava, so it's magnesium-rich magnesium lava. It's, uh, it's very hot, but less viscous, so it flows longer distances. Uh, and the largest on Earth, uh, above the hundreds of thousands of years, such as the island of Hawaii. Um, and again, as mentioned, there are five uh, younger overlapping shore volcanoes on the island of Hawaii. And uh, at the highest point, this is more than 10,000 meters above the seafloor, which is the, if it were to be uh, on, on the continent, uh, this would be, make it, it would make the island of Hawaii the largest mountain on Earth. Other types of volcanoes include flood basalts, which uh, erupt from fissures. Uh, these are more slowly moving. They form stacks over thousands of years, so no very large mountain. And the amount of magma erupted can be, can be large, um, but again, it's not coming from a, what we consider a very large mountain. It's just um, coming from uh, the stacks which come out from the land. Examples are the Columbia River flood basalt, which covers more than 130,000 kilometers, which happened about approximately 5 million years ago. Another is a cinder cone. This is mafic lava, sorry, mafic magma, which is rich in gas, and it spews uh, lava into the air. Um, it erupts as a shield volcano 
or as a flint basalt or a stratovolcano. Pieces uh, will solidify and rain down as cinder, so it's called lava bombs. Lucifer falls around the vent to form a cone-shaped pile, typically short-lived and have a low volume of, uh, of lava. Stratovolcanoes, here is a picture of a stratovolcano on the right. Uh, they are more towering, more classical, steep shaped, sloped. Mm, the shields are not steep sloped. The stratovolcanoes are steeply shaped sloped. They are frequently very symmetrical. Uh, they have uh, alternating layers of, of lava so they can build up over long periods of time. They have intermediate to felsic in composition, but have but kind of have some uh, mafic magma, so it's more iron rich than the others. Many stratovolcanoes are capped by glaciers, which gives its own glaciers being ice, permanent ice caps on top of the mountains, which, as we'll see uh, later, can have its own hazard. Magma are as, as viscous and gas rich, so it can erupt extremely explosively due to the volatile gases. The eruption of, uh, of volcanoes can develop into pyroclastic debris, ranging from very fine particles, uh, fine ash, that's in photograph A, to uh, what we call pumice, which is a glassy, silicide magma with many holes created by gas bubbles. C uh, is a, a large blocks of rock, uh, which you see the person standing in front of in photo C, and lastly in D, um, glowing lava bombs and cinders. Calderas are the largest of volcanoes. Calderas are um, circular shape. Uh, when they erupt, they often um, depress, cause a depression after the eruption and can sometimes, as shown in the picture on the right, fill with water. Um, they can expel tens, uh, uh, thousands of cubic kilometers of ash, which can completely blanket an entire region. And when this uh, ash lithifies or turns into rock, it's called tuff. An example of this is the Crater Lake National Park, which uh, formed through the collapse of Mount Mazama. There have been uh, quite a, there have been a number of uh, Macalera eruptions. Uh, La Garita, uh, which uh, formed in New, Mex uh, New Mexico, uh, is about 5,000 square uh, cubic kilometers of tuff, 28,000 years ago. Tobo Caldera in Sumatra, um, the uh, uh, it's just uh, 28,000, 20, sorry, 2,800 kilometers, uh, about 75,000 years ago. And the Yellowstone Caldera, which has erupted several times in the history of the United States, uh, 2 million years ago, uh, 1.2 million years ago, and 0 0.64 million years ago. So as you, as you see, uh, the eruptions in the Yellowstone Caldera uh, happens approximately between uh, 0 0.6 to 0 0.8, every 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 million years. We have, it's been more than 0 0.6 million years since the last uh, caldera explosion in Yellowstone. So some uh, scientists say that we are overdue for a large volcanic eruption at Yellowstone caldera. Here we have uh, the different types of volcanoes as mentioned before in previous slides. Increasing in violence from the flood basalts at the top of the of the diagram of the table, uh, continuing to shield volcanoes, the, sl uh, the uh, uh, smallly sloping a cinder cone, which is more explosive but still uh, rather small compared to a composite or a stratovolcano, uh, stratovolcano which has very steep uh, sides with complex uh, complex layering even more complex layering, but sometimes relatively smaller than the stratovolcano is volcanic dome. And the largest with the, uh, with the most uh, viscosity and most violence are the calderas, uh, which we just mentioned previously. The, uh, uh, the magnitude of a volcanic eruption is 
is measured in the VEI or the Volcanic Explosivity Index, which is a scale from zero to eight. And this table is shown on the right hand side, zero, zero being a daily eruption, such uh, which may happen uh, on Mauna Loa, uh, happens every day, all day long, to the largest uh, eruptions, such as um, Mount Toba in Indonesia 73,000 years ago. And uh, these large ones can spew more than 1,000 cubic kilometers of, of material at one time. But not only volume, volume is certainly a, um, a large part of the volcanic explosivity index, but so are the height of the eruption, the large being able to go up more than 25 kilometers into the atmosphere. The style of the eruption, is it a, a lava flow uh, or is it an explosive eruption? Lastly, the duration of the eruption. There are benefits to volcanoes, which they can have, they may have their own hazards, of course, but benefits include uh, metal deposits, quite often where we find extinct volcanoes, we find metal deposits. Also the solid debris, such as pumice and ash, can be used as building materials. It includes mountain scenery, which draws many tourists who like to climb mountain. The sacred Mount Fuji in Japan is, is certainly an example of this. Ski resorts, so uh, active, uh, semi-active volcanoes, Duma volcanoes in the western part of the United States, such as Mount Hood. Geothermal springs, Yellowstone is a very well-known geothermal spring. Geothermal power, which can come from these ge geothermal springs. The weathering of these volcanoes, as mentioned in previous modules, of the ash and the lava are very fertile, high in nutrients, and uh, this supports uh, agriculture after the weathering. Volcanoes can happen at a divergent plate boundaries at approximately 62% of all magma erupted through a mid-ocean ridge at a divergent plate. This is where the mantle decompresses as, it, uh, as, it, as the magma rises from the divergent plate. These two plates uh, diverge from each other. As this material rises, uh, the pressure and the melting point decrease. At approximately 100 kilometers, the temperature of the mantle is uh, about 1200. But uh, melting doesn't occur because of the high pressure, keeping the melting point very high. As it rises to, these, uh, to the lower pressure regions, uh, the melting point is lower and the temperature of the mantle uh, of the material also. This produces mafic magma, uh, which is partially, partially melted ultramafic mantle rock. Convergent plate boundaries are are less common, approximately 26% of the magma erupted on Earth is from a subduction zone or a convergent plate where the oceanic lithosphere sinks under the mantle. So this is a descending plate carrying water, liquid water, underneath the other plate. It's trapped underneath at very high pressures, and very high temperatures, forming uh, steam. Uh, releases the water and recrystallizes uh, all the volatiles such as carbon dioxide. Uh, overlaying mantle and its lower point rise. This uh, produces mafic magma, but this magma can, uh, can change as it comes up to the subduction zone volcano because these are primarily intermediate in composition. There's around 60% silica. Um, volcanoes can also happen within plates. Uh, very good exam examples of these are, are Hawaii, the island of Hawaii, or Yellowstone. And how can these happen? This approximately 10% uh, of volcanoes uh, form within a plate. These are caused by anomalies we call, uh, in the mantle, we call hot spots, which is just very hot um, parts of the mantle. And remember, the crust, the, which is, includes the tectonic plates are floating on the mantle. Uh, this material uh, rises and melts uh, to form ma mafic magma, being these hot spots, and the crust above that uh, also melts, which uh, produces intermediate and felsic iron-rich magma. An example are the Hawaiian islands. As I mentioned, uh, the tectonic plates 
uh, are not a fixed spot, but the, the hot spots are a fixed spot. So there are more than 80 volcanoes which progress and, and age from young to old. I'm sorry, from old to young as you go from north to south in the last 80 million years up until now. And along this way, the uh, volcanoes, volcanoes will uh, come up. Here you see it in, uh, in the map on the right. It shows where the, the hot spot has not changed, but the, uh, but the plate, tectonic plate above the mantle has moved. And as it's moved, um, the plate has moved to the north, and the oldest volcano along this Emperor Hawaiian Seamount chain at approximately 80 million years of age uh, is at the very far north in the Aleutian Trench. Continuing down to Hawaii, where the youngest volcanoes are at only six, uh, sorry, 0.4 million years ago, which is the large island of Hawaii. Pyrastic flows are hot ash uh, solid debris at more than 80 degrees Celsius, traveling up to 160 kilometers per hour, which is caused from a gravitational collapse of an ash column. Uh, these uh, are similar to an avalanche, but of ash. These are, uh, are also lateral eruptions. Um, a, a significant example of this was the Mount St. Helens. One of the reasons why Mount St. Helens was so devastating was because it did not erupt upwards, but it, uh, it erupted laterally on the side of the mountain. And uh, it also causes a collapse of the dome. Uh, this is either a base flow, which is a dense ground-hugging mass of ash, or a pyroclastic surge, which is an envelope of um, very hot gas and ash, ash around the base flow, which acts as a fluid and can go over ridges. Um, volcanic ash is approximately 0.01 centimeters in size. You see a picture of this in the uh, photo uh, above. And on the right, as mentioned, the, the sideways explosion of Mountain Sponsored Helen Helens, this lateral explosion, which released the ash in the flow. Lahars. Lahars are gravity-driven wet debris, which can happen Significantly, could happen a long time after the initial eruption. The heat of the eruption melts the snow and ice. As I mentioned, uh, such as stratovolcanoes are quite tall volcanoes, very tall mountains, and they have they have glaciers on top of them. Because of its, it's the, because of the heat, this snow and ice will melt. This melt will this melting of the snow and the ice will uh, will create a slurry with the ash and the lava and in the water. It's a very dense and fast moving flow. Uh, they can kill many people. So examples of the, uh, of the, Mount, of the eruption in Colombia killed uh, 23,000 people just at Lajars. And in Mount Pinatubo, uh, many people were killed in 1991 after the eruption, simply because of the melting water, mixing with the ash, causing landslides. Here is a photo of a lahar, um, and this is Mount Pinatubo. Entire villages were destroyed in one, in one event. M one overview of what uh, hazards are happening at a strata volcano, including the ash cloud. The ash cloud, uh, the silica itself can cause, can be very dangerous, but also releases the SO2, which causes acid rain. Tephra, or the explosive rocks coming out of the volcano, can, can cause quite a lot of damage. The pyroclastic flow, this, um, this avalanche of ash, blankets very large areas in the mountain. Again, later, uh, the ice and snow can melt, and a second uh, event, a lahar, can happen. And of course, and not to forget the lava flow itself, it's a very hot liquid. And depending on the amount of silica in it, if it has a low silica count, it can flow very quickly. Here are some devastating uh, pictures of volcanoes. On the left, you see the, um, the death of very large amounts of forest near Mount St. Helens, actually quite far away from Mount St. Helens. They were devastated by the ash. 
and also on the right hand side, Lahars, which um, is like a muddy river with a very large uh, house sized volcano uh, rock uh, carrying away with it. Lava flows are classified in generally two different types. You have the fast moving uh, hot mafic fluid called Pahui Hui. Um, and the AA flows, which are lower in temperature and therefore more viscous than the Pohui Hui. And uh, they tend to be more chunky and blocky, while the Pohui Hui are more fast flowing. Um, and, uh, and you see in this picture, you see both types. The Pohui Hui is underneath, it's more, more fluid, uh, and the AA above is more jagged rocks. Volcanic gases, as mentioned, are very hazardous to people. Uh, the CO2 released uh, can build up in such places as in gas bubbles. They're heavier than air, so they they sink to the to the to the, um, to the uh, land, and only it only has to be about a couple meters uh, in height to kill anybody under two meters tall. The CO2 uh, will push out the oxygen, and you'll have no oxygen to breathe. This can also build up slowly in the lakes, and such lake as Lake Nyos, a very known event happened in Cameroon in 1986, where um, the CO2 built up slowly in a lake. The lake released the CO2, unfortunately, all at one time. It blanketed, being heavier than, than air, it blanketed the surrounding, um, the surrounding land, where it killed uh, numerous livestock and uh, and all the people also within a 300 square kilometer radius of the lake. Volcanic fog is very deadly because of the sulfur dioxide released from the volcano, mixing with the oxygen and producing uh, acid rain. It, of course, sulfur is hazardous to plant life uh, when it, it turns into acid rain. And of course, SO2 is uh, contributes to climate change and greenhouse gas. Worldwide, it's estimated that more than 500 million people are living in volcanic hazard zones. This includes uh, large cities in Japan, North America, etc. Strategies include uh, dropping bombs to divert the lava flow, pumping water directly onto lava flows, such as they did in, for over five months in Iceland, and as in Mount Edna, uh, blasting the walls so that, and digging out lava tubes, so you have artificial channel, channels for the magma to seep into the surface. Hazard assessment is very important. So mapping the geology around a volcano, so you can, can say approximately what will happen when a volcano erupts. Hazard mapping, so uh, looking at the geology and identifying what kind of lava, ash, uh, pyroclastic flows can, can happen, lahars, how they will flow after an eruption. Laboratory work, uh, through laboratory work you can uh, tell what type of lava flow uh, happens, what extent the, the lava and ash erupted, and at what time. Volume and thickness also provide clues to past eruptions and how these can be strengths on future eruptions. And develop long range forecasts. So as I mentioned for mountain Helens, the caldera in North America, sorry, not mountain Helens, that's Yellowstone, it uh, erupts between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 million, every 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 million years. So uh, using long range forecasts, we are uh, overdue for another eruption of Yellowstone. Caldera. Modern volcanic activities, of course, also has its own um, hazards, but uh, monitoring the activity of the volcano is very important because of, if earthquakes happen, this can be a precursor to a volcanic eruption. The ground information, looking at, uh, at, at satellite images and using receivers on GPS and remote sensing techniques, you can see how much, how fast an uh, eruption 
the volcano is changing and the eruption is imminent. Gas composition concentrations are also closely monitored, as well as other precursors, small changes in the gravity and fluctuations in electrical conductivity because of the changes in the magma. In summary, we have learned volcanic activity is commonplace on Earth. Most volcanoes form along divergent or conversion plane boundaries, but there are still approximately 50 active volcanoes within plates, such as well, uh, a few gold calderas and the Polynesian island chains. The most explosive magmas are rich in silica, but very viscous and gas rich. Mathic, mathic magmas are silica poor, so less viscous, and erupt as lava, uh, lava flows, uh, such as shield volcanoes. Lava flows from shield volcanoes destroy property. Uh, they move more quickly because of uh, the low uh, silica, uh, silica percentage, but they don't uh, travel as quickly as um, a pyroclastic flow, which is, uh, which is ash spewing from a, a stratovolcano. volcano. Stratovolcanoes volcanoes uh, definitely cause more loss of life than um, a shield volcano. It's more slowly moving. Strata volcanoes, very explosive and very dangerous. As mentioned, pyroclastic flows, lahars, ash plumes, acid rain, and just pure ash and lava itself can kill. Volcanic gases released from volcanoes can be extremely hazardous and influence the global climate. Lastly, scientists study these eruption histories, uh, the map the distribution and the character of the, of the eruptive materials in order to identify hazards and predict future eruptions. This has been the uh, presentation for the volcano module, module six of the course on environmental geography. Thank you for your attention.